Hello, my name is Miranda Troutman, and I am a sophomore at Ramble College of New Jersey, where I am majoring in history. The video that you are watching is part of a virtual film festival produced as the final project in Dr. Jacob Lobenz's course, Holocaust and Media. I would like to thank the Gross Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies for sponsoring this program. The film I will be discussing is called My Best Friend Anne Frank, which was directed by Ben Sombogart. It was released in 2021 and distributed by Netflix. It was originally released in the Netherlands, and the majority of the film is in Dutch, with some scenes being in Hungarian or German, but there are, of course, English subtitles. The film stars Josephine Ardenson as Hannah Gosler and Eiko Beemsterboer as Anne Frank, and it is based off the book called Memories of Anne Frank, Reflections of a Childhood Friend. This book was written by Alison Leslie Gold, who was given the story from Hannah Gosler herself. The film won a Golden Film Award, which is a Dutch award for box office success. Most people gave the film an average of three, three and a half stars. I would personally give this film four stars. I encourage everyone to watch the trailer for this film, which will be posted on our website or available to watch through YouTube. And as of right now, the film is only available to watch through Netflix as it is a Netflix original film. So as a little synopsis, this film is based on the true story of Hannah Gosler, who was Anne Frank's best friend, and it takes place from the weeks just prior to when Hannah was taken to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp and goes up to the time when she had already been inside the camp for a couple of years. The film follows her family life, her relationship with Anne Frank, and her experiences within the camp. Throughout the film, there are themes of childhood and youth, as in the scenes before Hannah is taken to a camp, she seems desperate to hold on to her childhood, while Anne and the rest of their friends want to grow up as fast as they can. And this creates a sort of divide in Hannah and Anne's friendship for a while, right up until the point where they are separated and Hannah has to go to Bergen-Belsen and Anne has to go into hiding in the secret annex. Once Hannah goes into the camp, she is sort of forced to grow up as her mother had died and her father later dies in the camp. And Anna has to be the sole caretaker for her little sister, Gabby, and she has to fulfill a sort of motherly role. Um, so the camp basically strips her of the last of her childhood. And because of this, there was also a major theme of family as Hannah had to deal with the losses of both of her parents and was left with only her little sister as her family. Another theme in this film is Hannah's struggle to find joy in the concentration camp which is juxtaposed with her life beforehand where it was much easier for her to find joy. And there are very rare moments where she seems to be able to find joy in the camps, which are either when she's singing or when she's able to talk to Anne through the wall. And this is because these moments remind her of her life before she was forced into the camp. And for those moments that she is able to speak to Anne through the wall, she feels connected to her childhood more and her life before. I think another theme of this movie is obviously that of friendship. Um, Hannah and Anne are very close and very good friends before the camp, although they go through their struggles like any friends do. But Hannah is devastated when she believes that Anne and her family had already left for Switzerland without um, Hannah, although they were really forced to go into hiding in the annex. And when Hannah is in the camp, she is constantly thinking about Anne and asking herself, what would Anne do when she is faced with difficult circumstances and decisions? I think this film answers the questions that were posed by Anne Frank and in many of the depictions of Anne Frank, in which she reflects on her past and wonders whatever happened to Hannah and her other friends. This film just shows another perspective that gives a um, more well-rounded perspective on the whole story. And I think the film also just shows the lives of ordinary girls living through the Holocaust, especially beforehand, when they were witnessing their friends and neighbors starting to be taken away to camps. And even though Anne Frank is famous now for her diary, she and Hannah were just average teenage girls living in Amsterdam. And this film shows glimpses of what their lives were normally like before the Holocaust happened. This film is relevant because most people nowadays already know the story of Anne Frank, and a lot of people have read her diary in school. But most people don't also know the story of Hannah Gosler, even though these two stories are so connected and intertwined. The film differs from other films in that it portrays the famous story of Anne Frank in the background of her best friend Hannah's story, as the film is shown from Hannah's perspective. And most of the numerous films depicting Anne Frank, such as The Diary of Anne Frank from 1959, focus on Anne's story and are based on her writings and experiences. And they portray Hannah as a sort of background thought in Anne's daily life when she lived in the hidden annex. 
I also thought that it focused less on portraying the concentration camp as a whole, and it focused more on Hannah's personal feelings and relationships before and within the camp. I also found it interesting that in this movie, if we ignore the fact that most people already know the story of Anne Frank, we are left wondering what happened to Anne until the very end of the film, as it is shown from Hannah's perspective. While in movies depicting the life of Anne Frank, we are left wondering what happened to Hannah, as is shown from Anne's perspective. In both cases, you can imagine what it was like to experience just one aspect of life during this time, as many people had no idea what happened to some of their friends and, and neighbors, as many people were separated without warning. I personally really enjoyed this film, as I thought it was very interesting to see Anne Frank's story from a different perspective than, that, than what we usually see, and I thought that Hannah's story was just as interesting as Anne's, although it's not as well known. Um, I thought the acting was amazing, and I thought the directing and producing were really great. Um, the movie kind of made me feel on edge most of the time, um, as in the scenes before the camp, Hannah and her family are constantly trying to avoid being taken from their homes and they're trying to avoid detection from the Nazis. Um, and in the scenes during the camp, Hannah is also constantly trying to avoid being caught by Nazi guards as she talks to Anne through the wall and tries to pass through, pass food through the wall to Anne. Um, the film also made me feel really connected to Hannah and her story. And I thought that Hannah's story was, and experiences before the camp could be relatable, especially for all young girls. And I thought that her experiences within the camp were also very educational and enlightening, as before I watched this film, I hadn't known that Hannah and Anne were placed in the same camp and were able to communicate um, and reunite with each other towards the end. So I thought that was very interesting to know. Overall, I definitely recommend watching this film, and I hope you have the chance to watch My Best Friend and Frank when you can. And once again, it can only be viewed on Netflix at this time. And if you can't watch it, I would also recommend reading the book that um, it was based off of, which is called Memories of Anne Frank, Reflections of a Childhood Friend by Allison Leslie Gold. Thank you for watching.